Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about an important concept called virtual condition, and then I'll go over what a functional gauge is. In this video, I'll be using almost everything that you learned in the MMC LMC modifiers video. So if you pass that video without fully understanding it, I suggest you go back and watch it one more time to refresh your memory and also make sure you're very familiar with its concepts. Sounds good? Great. Now, buckle up because you're going to learn some interesting stuff. Okay, so far you have learned what RFS, MMC, and LMC conditions are. Now, this is the next step in understanding the benefits of MMC and LMC modifiers. I'm going to teach you what virtual condition is. But first, let's go over the absolute basics. Virtual condition is the condition of worst case scenario. It is basically a boundary that the combined effect of your size and geometric tolerance creates. It applies on features of size when we use MMC or LMC modifiers in our GDNT callout. Now, let me show you what I mean in a way that you never forget. I'll go over virtual condition at MMC first because it is much more useful than the case with LMC. Virtual condition at MMC is always outside your material and is a boundary that your material should never violate. This is great for assembly, and you will see why. I'll use the same two parts we had in the MMC LMC video. One has a boss cylinder on its base, and the other has a hole. I have specified datum A on their top surface this time, which will make sense to you when I go over the concept of functional gauge. Let's look at the boss feature first. If you remember from MMC LMC modifiers video, our GDNT callout is basically defining a variable tolerance zone that its value changes based on the size of our feature. The geometric tolerance that is specified in our GDNT callout is applied at MMC, which in this case is one millimeter. Now, as the size gets smaller towards LMC, we gain bonus tolerance the same amount. What's really important here is the fact that our bonus tolerance is the exact amount of departure from MMC. Let's see why. This essentially means that there will be a boundary outside our boss feature that our material can never violate. This boundary is created by the combined effect of our size and geometric tolerance. In order to calculate virtual condition, you have to add your size at MMC to your geometric tolerance. In this case, virtual condition will be 49 millimeters. Now let's approach it in a different way by looking at our table here. Think about the worst case when you try to make this part fit into our other part with the hole. If our boss feature is the largest size it can be, which is MMC, and its position is as far as it can be, we got our worst case, right? Your part with the hole has to compensate for this combined effect, so you get guaranteed fit. Now, let's see what happens when you have a smaller boss feature. Well, as your size gets smaller, you're gaining bonus tolerance, the exact amount, which means your worst case boundary stays the same in all cases. On the table, try to add any shaft size to its geometric tolerance. It always comes at 49 millimeters. This is beautiful in my opinion and makes so much sense. Now, why is this so important? Well, if your other part has its hole exactly at its true position with its size at virtual condition of 49 millimeters, you will always have a fit no matter what. Virtual condition here is basically telling us if we had a perfect hole exactly at the true position, which is specified by basic dimensions, how large it must be to ensure you always have a fit. Remember I told you MMC modifier is extremely useful when we deal with assemblies? Well, this is the exact reason why. It doesn't let any tolerance go to waste. With RFS or regardless of feature size, our worst case is still the same 49 millimeters because our worst size of 48 millimeters combined with the constant one millimeter of position tolerance, it's still gonna give us the worst case of 49 millimeters. But with RFS, as our size gets smaller, we still have the same one millimeter of position tolerance, which means there will be so many cases that we could have had a fit with our other part, but we had to throw the part away in inspection because it was out of spec. MMC basically allows you to use all the room for error which in reality is actually dependent on size of our feature. 
Now, let's go over our other part with the hole. This is very similar to our first case, with the only difference being that our visual condition is inside our hole this time. Why? Imagine having a perfect boss feature exactly at true position here. If you try to have a guaranteed fit, a hole at its worst case, which means being at MMC and off-center as much as it can be, is creating a similar equivalent hole for us in terms of assembly to a perfect part. Our visual condition here is 50 millimeters because the combined effect of our worst size, which is MMC of 51 millimeter, and worst position, which is a tolerance of one millimeter, gives us a 50 millimeter boundary at true position. If you look at the table, you realize that for any hole size, if you subtract position tolerance from the hole size, you get to the same 50 millimeter boundary. This is a boundary that the sides of your hole will never violate, which means this zone will always be empty no matter what. What I also suggest is that never try to memorize these as formulas. I myself haven't, to be honest. These are all common sense when you understand them. In both these cases, think about what stays constant and you will get your formula. Just remember we're trying to find a boundary that our worst case for assembly makes. Now, let me mention something important which I don't want you to miss. In the case of our boss feature, if its mating counterpart was just a small part with a hole and its position didn't matter, the worst case would have been only the MMC, which is 48 millimeters. This 49 millimeter boundary makes sense when your other part with the hole has to be aligned to our part in a certain way which our datums are showing now. What I mean is if our part with the hole is fixed to this part using datums A, B, and C, its position is locked and it would be very important to take the effect of position error into account. We have the same case with the whole part. Its virtual condition of 50 millimeters makes sense when its mating part has to touch datums A, B, and C, which means we have to take position tolerance into account. I think you got the basic idea. Just remember, MMC is used for assemblies due to its nature. Now, let's see what a functional gauge is. This is also known as a glow gauge. Let's say you want to manufacture hundreds of these parts. Well, you can't manufacture them without doing inspection, right? Now, how would you inspect these features? Well, you have to restrict datums A, B, and C in that order and start measuring the size of your features and also the position of their center axes, which is a lot of work, and it wouldn't be feasible in large scales. Now, a functional gauge is basically a part that you manufacture to check certain parameters during inspection. This part has to be manufactured at virtual condition at MMC. You can then simply see if your part can fit in this functional gauge or not, and if it does, you know the parameters that you're controlling are in spec. This is beautiful. So let's see what I mean in both these cases. For the first part with the boss feature, if you have a mating part that restricts datums A, B, and C, and it has a perfect hole at virtual condition located exactly at the true position, you can use this part to check if your boss's size and position are in spec or not by simply checking if they fit. This functional gauge looks very much like our second part with the hole, but it's not the same. This is because the size of its hole must be at virtual condition, and it has to be perfect. Well, we don't have perfect, but we can have perfect enough. It basically has to be manufactured with a lot of attention to make sure it is accurate enough for our purpose. We have the exact same concept for our second part. If you build a functional gauge that restricts datums A, B, and C, while having a boss feature at virtual condition located exactly at the true position, we can check the size and position of our hole. Now, I have to mention something really important. These functional gauges can tell us if our mating parts will fit or not, but they certainly cannot check everything. Let me tell you how. For example, in the first part, we can have cases that we get a fit but our actual size is outside the allowable zone defined by our size dimension. Let's say we manufacture a part with its boss exactly at true position while being 49 millimeters. It will fit, but its size is larger than our MMC of 48 millimeters, which makes it out of spec. We can also have a boss feature that is 45 millimeters and still in this zone created by virtual condition. It will fit, 
but its size is below LMC of 46 mm, which makes it unsuitable. This is why the size limits have to be checked separately to make sure every parameter is in spec separately. We have the exact same concept with our second part with a hole. We have to check the size of its hole separately even when it fits in our functional gauge because we can be out of spec on either side of our size dimension range, so keep that in mind. I think you got the idea. Now, since we're talking about assembly, let's go over something very interesting. Let's say you want to assemble our two parts together. What happens if both these parts are at their worst case? Will they have an exact fit? Will they overlap? Or will there be any clearance between them? Also, what happens when they are at their best case? How much clearance will there be? Well, let's find out. The worst cases can be compared by comparing their virtual conditions. We have 49 mm for our boss feature and 50 mm for our hole feature. This means if both parts come at their worst case, which means being at their worst size and worst position, there will be a clearance of 1 mm between them. Now, what is the best case for assembly? Well, if you have each of these parts at LMC and positioned exactly at their true position, they're gonna give us the best case for assembly. So for the boss feature, if our size is LMC of 46 mm and it is located exactly at true position, it will only occupy a 46 mm boundary and nothing more. For the other part with the hole, if our hole is at LMC which is 53 mm and positioned exactly at true position, we get a 53 mm boundary and nothing smaller. The difference between the two is 7 mm. These values basically tell us we can have fits as tight as 1 mm of clearance and fits as loose as 7 mm of clearance. You have to pay attention to your worst and best cases to ensure you have properly designed your components. So far so good? Great. Now let's see what virtual condition at LMC is. This is the opposite of virtual condition at MMC, which means our virtual condition creates a boundary that is always inside our material and not outside. So for a boss feature, it would be smaller than our minimum size, and for a hole feature, it would be larger than our largest hole. This way, the boundary is always inside our material. Now, let's see what I mean. Let's go over the boss feature first. Virtual condition here is the largest boundary inside our material that will always be filled with matter, no matter what. This boundary is made by the combined effect of our size and geometric tolerance. So in this case, we have a boundary of 45 mm because subtracting geometric tolerance of 1 mm from LMC of 46 mm gives us 45 mm. Also look at the LMC table. No matter what size your boss feature is, subtracting your position tolerance from your size will always give you the same 45 mm boundary inside your feature. Again, never try to memorize these as formulas, just think about how you can get to a constant value for all different cases. In this case, subtracting position tolerance from your size is constant. The zone is basically a boundary positioned exactly at true position that no matter what size your boss feature is and where it is located, you always have this zone full of matter. We have the same concept with our hole example. Only this time, virtual condition is larger than our hole. Remember, it has to always be on your material and not empty space. Look at the LMC table now. Just think about how you can get a constant value using your hole size and position tolerance. You probably guessed right. This time, adding them will give us a constant value which is 54 millimeters. This means if we have a boundary of 54 millimeters located exactly at true position, no matter what size our hole is and where it is located, that zone is always touching your material all around it. Now, what is the use of virtual condition at LMC? As you know, virtual condition at MMC is used when we have an assembly in mind and it tells us how to design a part to get a fit every single time. Now, LMC is not like that. First, you cannot build a functional gauge with virtual condition at LMC. Why? Because its boundary is always inside your material, which means if you build a functional gauge at that size, you can never fit your part in it due to its nature. Now, this is where it gets interesting. 
Virtual condition as LMC is used to control minimum wall thickness almost exclusively with hole features. It isn't much useful with boss features due to its nature if you think about it. But hole features are different. Take a closer look at our part with the hole and see what the virtual condition at LMC tells us. If you think about it, it basically tells us where we always have material, right? So we're certain that our hole never violates this boundary. This means by using LMC modifier, you can control your minimum wall thickness to any feature that is in a close proximity to your hole. So in our case, if we use the LMC modifier, we can control the minimum wall thickness between our hole and the edges close to it. This is very useful when you're dealing with a part that an internal feature like this hole can potentially create a very thin feature which can make your part structurally unstable and weak. You use LMC modifier when your priority is controlling wall thickness and not fit. LMC modifier does not guarantee fit and only controls your minimum wall thickness, so keep that in mind. I think you got the idea. These concepts can be confusing the first time you go over them, but with a bit of practice and actually thinking about them, you very soon realize how easy they are. Now, go think about what virtual conditions at MMC and LMC are for spherical and planar features of size. This way you can test yourself and see how well you understood these concepts. Sounds good? Great. I'll see you in the next video. For those of you serious learners, I have a full course on GDNT that I teach everything in a very digestible manner with many examples, tests, and bonus material that gets added frequently. I also have a free one hour webinar on our website that I go over GDNT symbols in more depth, so I suggest you to check that video out as well. Please like this video if you have learned a thing or two from this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on new YouTube content. I hope you have a great rest of the day.